I talk a lot about the importance of going to the movies, and I'll admit I have a bit of a bias. I usually go at least once a week, I review films as a hobby, and I make films as well, so I have a vested interest in people going to see them. But there's no denying that some cinemas are better than others, and you'll probably notice me going on about why we should all go to independent cinemas. So what makes a good cinema? First of all, let's define terms. I'm not too picky about the form of a cinema. I've seen movies in the cathedral of the London IMAX and in pokey 20 seat screening rooms, gorgeous classical cinemas and disused chapels and asylums, in bar basements, rooms above pubs, in fields and in tents. To me, a cinema is just a room with a biggish screen and other people. It's about the solitary yet communal experience of watching. That's what really counts. But when I pick my favorite cinemas, three things really stand out. The ideal cinema is independently programmed. This means that you're watching someone's personal selection, not just whatever the big studios are putting out that week. And often that's a wider range of films than you would get from a chain cinema. This may be just current releases, but including foreign language films and independent movies that you wouldn't otherwise see. There might also be repertory films, which are non-current releases, including classics, cult movies, and undiscovered gems of the past. As well as diversifying your own film watching, engaging with the work of independent programmers allows you to see what motivates other film watchers and provides valuable context for film experiences other than your own. For example, I know that the Prince Charles Cinema will put on raucous nights of schlocky movies as well as reliably screening classics from good prints. I know I can rely on the Regent Street Cinema to screen thought-provoking, clever double bills. I know I can catch movies at Close Up, Cine Lumiere and The Barbican that won't otherwise be on general release. Being independently programmed lends a cinema a personality, and as you get to know it, it can influence and develop your film taste. The ideal cinema also offers something beyond an interesting program. It has a good film-going experience. That's a little difficult to define, but you can see what's lacking by reading people's accounts of their problems with multiplexes. They might say the projection is poor, too dark, out of focus, or even presented in the wrong aspect ratio. You might be watching a quiet drama and hear explosions from the Transformers movie next door. And then there's the patrons, using their phones, eating loud popcorn, and why, by the way, is that our cinema snack? It's hard to imagine a louder food. One joy of seeing films at independent cinemas is that they often have a better film attending experience on offer. You might have a beautiful cinema with old fashioned red velvet seats, or an amazing projectionist working with old old film and 70 mil. There's often a proper lobby experience instead of the compressed sales area present in most multiplexes, maybe even a bar for you to hang out at before or after screenings. And in more modern settings, there's often extra offerings like Q&As, panel discussions, live music or double bills. It's certainly not true of all independent cinemas, but by virtue of having to compete with better funded multiplexes and from the total love of film that their programmers bring to the role, indie cinemas often offer a better film going experience. Lastly, the ideal cinema offers a community. This might be the silent community of the happy film buff. You can go to the ICA or the BFI and experience that. But plenty of places around the world also have a community cinema offering that allows you to see independently programmed films in venues that are closer to home. These might be community slots at regular cinemas or screenings in church halls, community centers, or even cafes. These clubs offer a vital opportunity for film watchers in areas otherwise served only by multiplexes and chains to diversify their viewing, as well as giving hobbyist and early career film programmers an outlet for their work. And they really stress the importance of communal experience to cinema providing companionship for film lovers and often taking group votes for program choices. In other words, you get to have a hand in the films that you watch. We're really lucky in the UK that the BFI Independent Cinema Office and Cinema For All have guides and support for community cinema groups to find and screen works. For me, just through what these groups offer their communities, they are great examples of cinema at work. If you're interested in independent cinema, it's worth seeking out what options might be available in your area. If there's nothing nearby, then consider working out your own screenings. A room above a pub is often available. Or seeking out the smaller streaming sites, in particular BFI Player and Mubi. You probably have your own feelings about what makes a good cinema, and I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. I'd like to leave you here though, with a list of indie cinemas that I know. I'm also aware that my experience of independent cinemas is very London-centric, and I'd love to find out more about your local places.
That's it from me. Bye for now.